KTU Cares, a salute to local heroes. What kind of world do you want? Think it, think. History starts now. On KTU Cares, good morning. How's it going? Bartell in the KTU studio. September is a big month, not only back to school, but I don't know if you realize this or not, but September is pain management and drug-free pain management month. And that's why we've got a great doctor here in the studio with us on KTU Cares. Uh, Dr. Trusha Shah is here. She is chair of pain medicine at Pro Healthcare. We love all of you over there at Pro Healthcare out on Long Island. So, Trusha, it's great to have you here, doctor. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Bartell. Tell. If you could um, tell us a little bit about you and what has led up to you being uh, the chair of pain medicine at Pro Healthcare and, and what your daily duties are as the chair. So I did my training at uh, Cornell at HSS yeah. with Sloan Kettering Pain Management. So it's a tri-institute fellowship um, where we basically focus on chronic pain, uh, sports medicine related pain. Uh, and here at, at Pro Health, I've been at Pro Health for about five years now. Uh, I came uh, working from St. Francis and uh, I'm currently the chair of pain medicine. And I'm so excited to talk to you about uh, pain management and, and pain medicine in the sense of what, what the future lies. As we know, we've been dealing with lots of different issues uh, with the opioid crisis, and uh, there are about 100 million Americans who suffer with uh, chronic back pain and, and chronic pain syndromes, and we see a multitude of, of different specialties here. Uh, so I'd love to go through the different mm -hmm. modalities with you and, and talk about more preventative care. Uh, what is your day like? You're seeing patients pretty much, and, and for what reason in, in a lot of cases? So these patients that usually come to me uh, usually are seen by three or four physicians prior to seeing me. Uh, a, patient, a typical pain patient um, will have sort of some sort of pain, which is acute in nature, um, for a couple of weeks where they, they either take a Tylenol or an Advil and the pain's not getting better. They go to their primary doctor. Their primary doctor uh, realizes that the pain is still present um, and orders a, a series of tests. Usually those tests include an x-ray, uh, maybe a diagnostic imaging, including an MRI or a CAT scan. And then they usually get sent to either physical therapy or, or an orthopedic surgeon or an orthopedic specialist. Um, and by the time they come to me, they usually have some sort of um, working diagnosis of either um, lower back pain, um, spinal stenosis, um, or certain other disease processes like uh, CRPS, which are a little bit more complicated neuropathic disorders. Are you seeing people that uh, have come after surgery maybe, or that maybe need surgery, or just have pain in general? Usually once you have any sort of inciting pain uh, stimuli, it, and it's coming from, let's say, a, a compressed nerve root, um, a pinched nerve in your neck or your back. Um, prior to any surgical management, they usually come to see us for either in, interventional sp uh, specialists or, or surgery, prior to surgery. So um, the, most of the patients are pre-surgery, but we do see a multitude of post-surgery patients also. Doctor, if uh, people want more information on what we're about to talk about today and what we're still talking about early in the stages of KTU Cares this morning, where can they go? Lookup.prohealth.com. Lookup.prohealth.com is a place to go. And Trisha Shah is here, chair of pain medicine at Pro Healthcare. And always great to have uh, the doctors from Pro Healthcare come visit. Talk to the KTU listeners a little bit about pain management and what that whole kind of definition is. And then we'll kind of go into all these really wonderful things that you've talked to me about already before we went on the air. And I want to go into them one by one because I was fascinated in just the time that you briefly explained them. But, but pain management as a whole. Pain Management as a whole is a, a very complex um, multitude of different specialties. So we basically see all types of pain. We can see migraine pain. You may have abdominal pain. We can see back pain, neck pain. Um, so when a patient comes into the office, we try to get a very good history. And the history is the key. Uh, is there an inciting event that occurred, like a motor vehicle accident, or is it something that they had a childhood injury where um, they had a, a bad uh, fall or gymnastics sure. or sports injury? Um, and what we see nowadays is a lot of degenerative discs. So we have neck issues or back issues, especially with the way, especially in New York and Long Island, uh, people are very stressed out. They have crazy jobs. They try to exercise and they end up having, um, especially with the different gyms that are around like CrossFit, things like that, we see a lot more injuries that are sports medicine related. Um, so by the time they come to us, they've tried a multitude of things, including physical therapy. A lot of times they try acupuncture, they'll do some chiropractic care, um, and then they'll take a, a multitude of medications, including muscle relaxants, some um, steroids, and, and some pain medications, including narcotics. Um, and then at that point, when n the pharmacological therapy is not helping, they send us to the interventional spine specialist. And that's what I am. 
I basically work with uh, spinal injections to help decrease inflammation. And what I do is I pinpoint where a nerve root is being impinged, either in the cervical spine, thoracic spine, or lumbar spine. And what we try is different types of procedures. So these procedures could entail an epidural steroid injection, which is basically depositing a small amount of steroid to decrease inflammation, a very small amount, not a large amount that can sort of long-termly hurt your body in the sense of increasing your blood sugar mm -hmm. or um, causing any disc degeneration, but enough for you to go back to your normal functioning. Uh, these patients are unable to walk, um, you know, and may, maybe not even be able to lift their arms. They have different um, problems, including numbness or tingling or motor weaknesses in the leg or the arm. Give us an idea of why it's a good idea to strive toward the reduction of what we've heard a lot of, and that's opioid reliance. So the opioid reliance, um, in general, a lot of practitioners um, try to stay away from narcotics. So our first-line therapy is usually non-pharmacological and non-opioid pain management strategies. These include chiropractic care, physical therapy. Um, they do include muscle relaxants. They include anti-inflammatories. But with any medication, Bartel is not good. You don't want to be dependent on anything. So in general, if they don't meet that criteria and we do give them, let's say, a small three-day supply or a seven-day supply for this excruciating pain until they're able to either have this procedure done or go for surgical management if, if it's un if the pain is unbearable. Um, these injections are not long-term. Um, they're basically for acute radiculopathy, which we call like a, a, a pinch nerve. Mm -hmm. And um, if, if it does help them, they move forward. They may not need surgery. They may go down the course of physical therapy. Long-term, it's really physical therapy, lifestyle changes, lifestyle modifications in the sense of um, either changing the type of work that you do, getting a sit-to-stand desk if sitting increases the disc pressure, um, changing their exercise routine where they're avid runners and all of a sudden, you know, the disc is not, the integrity is lost. So you need to take a break from that. Um, and then I'm a big firm believer of meditation. I think that um, mindfulness and meditation are so important. And people, you know, they say, yeah, I meditate, but they look at the wall and then their mind is already fluctuating. And they are the only ones that know they're not meditating. So that's the most important thing. It's like you have to take time out of your life, no matter what type of profession you have, and, and, and spend time on yourself in, in the sense of making sure you try to eat as healthy as possible, making sure as far as um, pain that you address the pain, not to let it get to a point where um, it's become chronic. And chronic, that means like past three months usually, three to six month period. So, and, and it's hard to believe that a lot of people we're talking to this morning uh, could not even maybe be dealing with or addressing uh, things of chronic pain. And you just said something very important, that if it does linger and it is chronic like that, get it checked out. Get it I mean, checked it, out. Go to your doctor, you know, let them know that the importance of this. And if you realize that you've been taking a lot of Aleve, a lot of Advil, a lot of Tylenol, anything that becomes a daily routine, that's that's something that's sort of a, a sign that, you know, you, something's definitely going on if you need to take a medication every day. And not only that, even though it is over the counter, there are some drawbacks to that as a long-term yeah. using it all the long -term time. Long-term use of definitely for any um, non steroidal anti-inflammatories can increase your blood pressure, hurt your kidneys, and Tylenol can hurt your liver. So long-term wise, you definitely want to, you know, keep an eye on it. And a lot of times there'll be a loved one, they'll say, hey, why are you taking so many? You know, maybe you should check this out. Um, and I, I do believe that in, in general, you know, your lifestyle modifications long-term wise will help you with your mindset of chronic pain. Sure. Dr. Trusha Shah is here. She's chair of pain medicine at Pro Healthcare. And again, any more information that people would like to get from our show today, where can they go, doctor? Look up .prohealth com. You mentioned something really interesting, and that is uh, the big race that we all have to eat healthier and live a healthier lifestyle, which I couldn't be more happy about and seeing that happen. It's actually very cool to have that now. Uh, a lot of social posts and things like that showing people where they're working out and what they're eating and all the different uh, great foods that we have out there now in great stores and restaurants. Uh, how important is it to do just what you said? What if people don't even want to get to the point of worrying about pain relief? They just want to do a healthy lifestyle yes. to help the pain in general. I completely agree. So when I meet my patients, the first thing I ask them is, you know, what, what do they do every day? You know, when you wake up, what time do you wake up? How much sleep do you get? What do you eat every day? What time do you eat? And what does your diet consist of? And the diet is so important. Even if, you know, most people are looking at, you know, lean proteins, caloric intake. You want to make sure that you, you figure out for your body type what works for you. And also different anti-inflammatory sort of medication and, and, and fruits and vegetables such as turmeric. Um, a lot of patients uh, are on it on, and they're mm -hmm. doing well with it. And in general, you change the type of, of food that you eat. You feel like healthier and the activity level increases. You feel like, okay, I'm going to go and do this. Some of my patients are overweight. Some of them have such bad knees, bad hips that they can't work out. They can't go to therapy. And I'm a firm believer in aqua therapy. When they're in the 
aqua therapy. I have a physical therapist in there with them. Um, there's 30 minutes. They they get such a great great uh, as far as like for their backs, so, like they have such a great um change in their in their body habit is that they can now transform into like gland therapy or physical therapy and then continue that. Uh, you brought up an excellent point there too. Uh, it, it, you believe in the aqua therapy part. When people that are even listening today, um, if if they can't work out, diet is so much more important than anything else. Because if you can't really do the workout part or the exercise part, um, diet becomes the main thing. I would have to say is yeah. so important. Right? And in general, whenever I have patients that are you know basically trying to lean down, especially with their core strengthening and and try to for their blood pressure, whatever other reasons, um, looking at their BMI. It's you know, a lot of times it's eighty percent diet, twenty percent you know exercise. The exercise is a great component because it also has endorphins that helps sure. you with your stress relief. But the diet component you know is so key, and a lot of patients um, don't realize how much they eat and when they snack how much they snack. And the water intake, they they don't they say sort of look at water and say oh that's not something you know. But the next thing you know they're drinking something that's you know has sugar in it or carbohydrates in right. it, and that all adds up. On KTU Cares this morning, Dr. Trusha Shah is here. She's the chair of pain medicine at Pro Healthcare. And today we're having this great show in September, of course, because it's pain management and drug free pain management month. So it's great to have you here. You talked about some different non opioid pain management styles with me earlier. And I wanted to get into some of those and really spend a lot of time this morning because we have the time to do so, doctor, this morning. Uh, however, you want to go about talking about some of these with us. So sure, Martel. What I want to first talk about is for so most of my patients when they come to me, they have like let's say chronic back pain or lower back pain, and a lot of times it's due to something called lumbar radiculopathy, which is a pinched nerve in your back, or um, the classic sciatica patients that come in, um, and lumbar spinal stenosis. And over time, uh, these patients have had a multitude of therapies, including physical therapy. They've had a multitude of medications, and they've tried multiple epidural steroid injections, uh, which have not helped them or helped them in the past, but lost its efficacy. Uh, and there are different types of pain um, that we call what we call either axial neck and lower back pain, which comes um, from the disc, from the arthritis and the joints. These joints are called facets um, that basically are like your knee, your hip, their osteoarthritis joints, their synovial joints. And what happens is that over time, our discs degenerate, the, the facet joints get arthritic, and they start to cause pain. And that pain is like a chronic, dull, aching pain. First thing in the morning, getting out of bed is difficult. Um, if it's in your neck, it can radiate into your shoulders and your neck. Sure. And it, it, sometimes it can cause you to have headaches. And that pain over time you know, will help with some anti-inflammatory, sometimes massage, acupuncture, PT. But when it gets to a point where it's not helping and you're not truly a surgical candidate, we look at these alternative interventional pain specialists um, like, like myself. And what I do is basically block these nerves, and they're called medial branches. And they're basically sensory nerves. They have no motor function. They don't affect your arm or your leg. Um, and then we block it. And if that gives you some good relief, we can safely do something called a radio frequency ablation. And that is basically a thermal ablation um, to basically de-enervate that nerve. And that lasts almost about a year for the lumbar spine, um, the lower back, and the cervical spine in your neck. Um, and that's one great thing that a lot of patients like, oh, I'm suffering from arthritis. You know, I take these medications. I, I'm not a candidate for infusions. I'm not, I don't have rheumatoid arthritis. I have, I have regular osteoarthritis. But the neck and the back pain especially uh, is definitely something that patients don't know about, that there are alternative treatment options, which are not epidurals. You know, it's not going into the spinal nerve roots or near the epidural space. Now, the pain we're talking about here, I mean, and, and and this is a type of thing where I think everybody would love to live a pain-free life, okay? Um, there's probably a good number of people out there that even sitting in their car a certain way, uh, sleeping a certain way, and they wake up in the morning a certain way, is there is there some type of advice that you can you can give us whether it's stature whether it's a certain way to sit if, if we have long-term positions if you will um, that are just creating uh, the pain that we just really can't bear but we're just still trying to work through it what advice so most of it is just doing not doing anything for too long so in your current situation or job if you're sitting for um, a long period of time get up for 20 minutes do a quick walk around um, Posture is very important, keeping your core tight. The core has so much to do, especially with the neck and the lower back. If your core is strong, um, it, it offloads a lot of the, the sort of the function of the discs where you're not putting so much pressure on it. Sitting does increase your disc pressure the most of people that sit for too long. It really puts a lot of pressure on it. Um, and then long-term wise, I would say just changing up your activities, You know, not doing the same thing over and over again because it becomes very repetitive. On KTU Cares this morning, Dr. Trusha Shah is here, Chair of Pain Medicine at Pro Health Care. And if people want more information that are listening today on KTU Cares, you can go to lookupprohealth.com. 
Com. We talked about something before the show aired this morning about neuromodulation and all different types of these treatments. So neuromodulation is such an exciting, exciting yeah, field. Yeah, I, I got excited just hearing <laughs> you, what, what you're about to say. It is, it is <laughs> unbelievable. It's going to be changing the way that we deal with pain. And neuromodulation is basically, it started a long, long time ago, uh, but we've now come up to a way to actually figure out and pinpoint where our pain receptors are coming from. So what it is exactly is that we are changing the pathway in what we call the dorsal column, the sensory column in the, lum- in the, cerv- in the uh, spinal cord region. And the pathway that these fibers come from, we are able to sort of change the pathway in the sense that when you have a chronic pain, let's say it's in your ankle or your knee, you had had knee surgery or you had back pain, and it's constant, you've had it for 20 years, and your brain has built up this sort of wind-up circuit where it constantly knows that the the neurons that come from the brain, we come from the thalamus, go down into your knee, and it's just there. What we do is we put these little electrodes, and the electrodes are basically changing what we call cathodes and anodes, these the, uh, the the changes that the, we call the cerebrospinal fluid, the impulses that are there, and it stops that pain pathway. So in the body, everybody has what we call dermatomes, different locations in your spine, and that's based on the thoracic spine in this current situation we call spinal cord stimulation. We basically uh, place this small electrode that has either 8 to 16 contacts on it, and those contacts we put on uh, into like uh, in the operating room table, um, mm-hmm. and we put it under live x-ray so we know we're in that what we call the thoracic region. We're able to stimulate it um, with an external device and and say, okay, we tell the patient, you know, before we sort of map out where their pain is. Once we map out their pain, once they're in the operating room, we, we locate it and we slide it in, into that epidural space um, in the thoracic region. Our goals and targets are basically from the thoracic level 8 to about 10, and we stimulate um, with, with this um, remote control. And that basically, we wake the patient up and say, do you feel this in your toe? Do you feel this in your ankle? Do you feel it in the areas that you have the pain? Once we capture it, because everyone's what we call physiologic midline is a little bit different. One can be off to the left, to the right, and some people have only left-sided pain, some people only have right-sided pain, so this uh, implant is so important. And that stays with you for about five to seven days. We do a trial. So we basically, I, I like to suture, some people don't, but I, I'm very particular. We, I put a big dressing on. I talk to the patients every day. I see, do you feel this? You know, And they want to make sure I get this... Um, they get an iPad. The iPad shows me what they were able to do before, what they were able to do with the trial. And then what I do is see them back in the office. And it's usually like the littlest thing. So I I do a target and goal book. My target is to play with my grandkids, go on the floor, read a book with them. My target is to walk down the block. My target is to go into Costco and and not have to hold on to or get a chair, things like that. So, and then I see, I want them to do those targets and say, we're going to do this trial. It's called the spinal cord stimulator trial. They do, they do exactly what they did. And you see, if they have at least 50% reduction in their pain, mm-hmm. or if they're on narcotics, we see how many less pills they took, if, they, you know, if they're taking any sort of anti-inflammatories. And then they realize that this is the best thing ever. So unfortunately, I do have to take out the trial. So I take out the lead, and then they're back to their baseline pain. So what I do is I work with a multitude of orthopedic surgeons, neurosurgeons that do these implants. And the implants are like a little pacemaker battery. These batteries are tiny, like an ounce. Right. And you basically make a small pocket like in the lower back buttock area. And then we put the actual lead in. We, it's like a small little scarred laminate. We go inside, we put it in, and we tunnel it, and then we connect it. And then the patient has it in. So that can last, you know, have patients have it for 20 years. And I have patients that I've done these trials on from 20 years old who had orthopedic injuries till my last, most oldest patient was 87 years old. Wow. So it's incredible. And they're completely reversible. Say, like, it just stops working or you're not happy. We sure. Can, we, we, they come back into the office and say, you know, my pain changed now. That pain that I used to have in the right leg, now it's in the left leg. You just basically reprogram it, move the leads, because you have so many contacts. And, and the contacts have such a wide, we use what we call um, high-definition um, mm-hmm. sort of stimulation. High definition just means that you have a high uh, pulse width and amplitude where you're able to increase the the, um, the the energy to that that just stops the pain completely. Traditionally, when we had the older models, we would have like, I don't know if you know what a TENS unit is, but it's like a little buzz, like a machine that we put on onto, onto the muscles in the back, like little electrodes, okay. and we basically um, stimulate it to cause the pain to go away. Fascinating. You can see why I asked that question. Just in the brief time before we got things started this morning on KTU Cares, when you did talk to me about that, I was like, we're going to hit on this and <laughs> we're going to hit on it good. Because I just, I love the, that description that you just gave. And, and, and I really love the, the, the amazing stories. And, and I want to have you spend some time with us on that. There's got to be some really, really cool stories of where people have started out with you or even doctors before you 
and, and then now you have them accomplishing. And it's really, I have to tell you, Bartel, it's it's so it makes you feel like you know you go I go to work and I and I feel like I make a difference and. You know, it is one of the most gratifying things. I see people that could never walk and were working with walkers and now don't have anything. I see people that were just miserable. And, you know, I mean, the type of people that I see every day, it's incredible. It's really incredible. But the changes that we are able to help them to do where, sure. where they are unable, they thought they were going to lose an arm or a leg or even 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 um, things that like they just felt like they, they would never be able to do again. They, they changed their entire lifestyle. I had a patient who, you know, we took care of her pain. She just, she went back to school. She decided to, you know, she was a single mom. She she felt like she could do anything in the world. And and we give them their life back in the sense that, and in such a way that a lot of the doctors, you know, unfortunately, they don't know what to do with pain. They're just like, okay, so go to the pain specialist. And when we get these people, they're so frustrated because they've seen so many providers. They're, they're scared that you're going to say, I, I can't help you. You know, and, and there's so many different alternatives, and that's why it's so important to always look at our alternative methods. You know, there's different things that work for different people. And, and my next point about pain in general is, is and you just hit upon this about a, uh, about a minute ago, is that pain probably has made some of these people just not get to what they should be getting to in life. Uh, they'll get up in the morning and just kind of go through the day. Isn't it great for you to see people get up in the morning and actually not just get through the day or just go through the day, but really power through it and have this kind of vibe about them because now there's no pain or not as much pain, if That's you will. That's 100% correct. You know, we see some patients that have like we call post herpetic neuralgia, and it's unfortunate. It's a disease when you get sort of shingles pain, and a lot of mm -hmm. patients do get it. And sometimes it goes away, and it's fine. You don't have this neuropathic component. But the patients that end up with that, it can last for years. And we do these different blocks where we basically try to block the nerve, and then they have they feel like they, they're not able to even wear their shirt. They have to walk around with their shirt out because it's so painful to keep it on. And there's some newer modalities, even with the spinal cord stimulator now, that we're able to do to take that pain away. On KTU Cares this morning, Trusha Shah. Is here. Uh, give us a way to stay in touch and get some more information for those uh, at Pro Healthcare. Sure, it's lookupprohealth.com. Um, we are talking this month in September because it is pain management and drug free pain management month. How do we tell if somebody close to us, friend, family member, uh, is dependent on or addicted to any kind of medication? So the biggest thing is you, you notice a change in their normal environment in the sense that they're not acting the same. Um, they may be sort of a little bit more edgier when you ask them any questions about their medication. Um, in general, like when we talk about opioids, um, there are always different side effects, um, sort, such as nausea, vomiting, sedation, respiratory depression, and constipation, um, which can also be sort of a sign that the patient may be addicted or uh, dependent on it. Um, and, and a lot of times uh, when I see patients that are on, um, that were on either chronic opioids in the past or are on it now, and their family members want to solely take them off of it or look at other modalities, it has to be done with both people together. Like a lot of times we do um, either biofeedback with a psychologist to try to, or a family meeting to go over what's going on. So everyone has what their goals are and understands um, the patient's functional capacity. So at, usually by the time they're at that stage, it's something that happened to them. It could be a car accident. It could be in a surgery. Um, and something um, sort of got them on these medications. And the hardest thing is uh, is letting the patient who may be dependent or addicted to the medication realize that they are. And once they realize that they are, it's easier for us to either, depending on how um, how aggressive we are, we can either go into sort of an inpatient rehab sort of situation or an outpatient rehab um, with strong support from with a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Uh, depending on how bad the addiction problem is. Um, with us, what we do is for any patient that comes into our practice, we always um, we, we do certain things like we, we follow something called the CDC guidelines for um, chronic pain. Mm -hmm. And that's very important. I think most of all the pain management, in, in, especially my colleagues in the New York, New Jersey area, we all are, are on the same page with that. Um, we check something um, that, uh, that there's a New York State prescription uh, program, the PDMP, that we all look at to make sure that we know who's prescribing. So mm -hmm. everyone is on the same page. A lot of the pain specialists will call each other to make sure that we're helping these patients and making sure that, you know, if there is anyone that can be dependent or addicted, that we're taking and making every chance to make sure that they go to the right person to deal with it. What do you say to listeners um, that really feel that their pain, there's nothing that can be done about it? I'm just done with it. There's nothing that can be done about it. And 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 then my next question to follow up with that, um, the things that you've talked about today would that have been possible years back, or were, are we always seeing advances in your field that should make those people say, 
I've got to try something. That's the biggest thing, Bartel. Right now, pain medicine and just chronic pain is is basically in such an innovative state. There's so much technology. There's so much change that's going to be going on with this. There's The problem is that pain is subjective. So when, when a patient comes with a heart attack or they have chest pain that radiates on their arm, a lot of times we know. We check the heart. It makes sense. The EKG is there. They have cardiac markers that, are, that, that correlate to the diagnosis. Pain, you have a patient who has fibromyalgia, that has chronic rheumatoid arthritis, IBS, all these things. They come in, it's so hard, you're taking what they say for, you know, for, for their word. Mm -hmm. And then you look at other, other things such as uh, functional capacity, how far can they walk, do they sit, what's their uh, stature like, um, looking at their x-rays and MRIs. But you know, each and every MRI and each and every x-ray may show pathology, but it doesn't mean that that's what the patient's coming in for. And that's a very important thing. So the physical examination is so key. Um, and then understanding um, what type of pain. There's different qualities. There's burning. There's aching. There's shine. There's all these qualities of pain. That's when we went back to talk mm -hmm. about um, the different types of pain. There's neuropathic pain, which is burning. Somatic pain, which could be dull, aching, kind of diffuse. And there's a mix of both of them. So understanding that will help us understand what quality of pain it is. Just a couple of minutes left on the show on KTU Cares. We've gotten close to our half hour mark, and uh, <laughs> that's great. Very impressive, and, and, and I love the show this morning because I'm learning a lot. Chair of Pain Medicine at Pro Healthcare, Dr. Trusha Shah, is here with me on KTU Cares. And again, a uh, place to go for more information. Look up ProHealth.com. And doctor, in these remaining minutes, uh, if there's something that you hit on on the show that you may feel that it's worth mentioning again, uh, or if there's something that you didn't get to that you really, really feel that our listeners uh, should know about. I think the most important things I, I, I want to leave is like th three different things. Um, I want you to try all non-pharmacologic and non-opioid pain management strategies. Um, and definitely talk to your doctor um, if you are seeing a pain management specialist or if you do have pain. You want to make sure you establish a goals um, with your patients that include a realistic um, pain and, and functional objectives in the sense that you have to know what you can achieve and what you cannot. Um, and if your provider is considering opioid therapy, understand the risks and the realistic benefits of that opioid therapy. Excellent. Very good. On KTU Cares this morning, great to have you here. I know I have certainly learned a lot. And, of course, September being Pain Management and Drug-Free Pain Management Month, it's been great to have you here. Chair of Pain Medicine at Pro Healthcare, Dr. Trusha Shah. And before we go, just a couple of minutes, if you could, maybe a minute or two, on the importance of the overall exercise, uh, nutrition, and, and staying healthy part of things. So, so the pain, hopefully not even come into play. <laughs> so I, I'm a big, big believer, like I said, in meditation. I think stress uh, has a big component of, of pain, uh, and it, it basically exacerbates your pain. So if you can uh, take five minutes to just do some deep breathing, I, I do it with my kids, so we call it bal balloon breathing uh, when they're very frustrated, and it does help. I use it myself when before you say something wrong or you cannot tolerate something, it just do five big balloon breaths. Um, and you'll feel a little bit better. Um, eating healthy is so key in the sense that it's something long-term. I know I take care of young patients and, and I have a great, uh, very active um, 80s and 90s uh, patients and they're incredible. And my biggest thing is I ask them, what do you eat? What do you do? What's your normal routine like? Because I think it's amazing. Sure. They are um, so active. They yep. are so, my, their mind is so fresh. And so I think making sure you do something that, that engages you, that, that you feel like you're inspired by. It could be reading a book. It could be doing puzzles, something, but something that engages your brain. Because once your brain, those connections are constantly there, you will have a routine. You will want to eat healthy. You will have a purpose and have an inspiration to continue. So that's one of the biggest things. And people, you know, they know eating healthy, yes, you know, you want to eat, you know, small meals, you want to have lower calories, you want to make sure you exercise, all these things. But long-term benefits to for chronic pain, the brain has so much to do with it. And if you can sort of um, deal with the pain in a sense and, and put it in different ways with meditation and, uh, and, and being mindful, it'll definitely help you. Great show today on KTU Cares. Dr. Trusha Shah, Chair of Pain Medicine at Pro Healthcare. Thanks so much for joining us on KTU Cares. Thank you so much, Bartel. Thank you so much, Bartel.